This is a Parkinson's patient who was diagnosed 14 years ago. She's been on Parkinson's medication for 13 years, and they are losing their effectiveness. It's been my experience that this is a very common happening after being on the medications for several years. She had a deep brain stimulator implanted two years ago, and she says it does no good because her physicians cannot find the proper settings. This is a very common uh, thing that we hear from these patients. In fact, in the last month, we've had three or four patients come in with deep brain stimulators implanted that are not working. This is not an unusual occurrence for us. She's been, to complicate matters further, she was diagnosed with head and neck cancer 12 years ago. She was diagnosed and treated for TMJ problems 16 years ago and wore a mouthpiece for three years. We always take a CAT scan report on these patients Always, always, always. And I've never seen a Parkinson's patient that did not have TM joint pathology. And we document each and every one of these patients with, a cat, with an MRI report. When they have a deep brain stimulator implanted, uh, it's very difficult to obtain the MRI. And so we use a CAT scan, and, which is what we did on this patient. And a CAT scan report came back showing the following pathology. Flattening of the rounded left condyle with erosions in the articular cortex. Cortical erosions of the left articular eminence. Narrowing of the left temporomandibular joint space. Osteophytes on the anterior and posterior surfaces of the deformed left condyle. Erosions of the right condyle. Erosions of the right condyle's articular cortex and the right articular eminence. Osteophytes on the anterior surface of the right condyle. Narrowing of the left TM joint space. These changes are due to degenerative arthritis, worse on the left side. In examining the patient, we noticed that she had a deep bite of approximately 80%, which means that upper teeth extend down, covering 80% of the height of the lower teeth. Her mouth locks shut. She has difficulty swallowing and chewing, difficulty turning the head left or right, right neck pain, right shoulder pain, and insomnia. This is a Parkinson's patient who has had a deep brain stimulator implanted. You can see the wires running uh, down the side of her head and down her neck to her chest. The deep brain stimulator does not work. It, no one has been able to find proper settings for it. Again, evaluate the cranial distortions present in this uh, patient by the discrepancy in the positions of her mastoid processes here on the left side compared to the one on the right. This one is out and this one is in. Again, note her deviated nasal septum. This is the lateral head x-ray of this patient. You can see the wires from the deep brain stimulator running down her cervical spine into her chest. The only thing this woman has that is a real big asset for her is the size of her airway. This is a fantastically wide airway and will serve her well. This is this patient's submental vertex x-ray. It again shows the wires of the deep brain stimulator here and running down the side of her head, down her neck. It also indicates that she cannot extend her head posteriorly because if she had normal extension of the head, the upper teeth right here would be at the top of the film right up here. But this is the patient's best effort at extending her head and you can tell just from the x-ray that she doesn't have normal extension. This is the patient's right temporomandibular joint images showing that there is no distal skid between initial contact and full occlusion. But 
Notice that it shows a, an osteophyte on the anterior surface of the condyle right here. When they're pointed like that, that means they're made of osseous material as opposed to cartilaginous material. This is this patient's Panorex x-ray and I show it to you to show that frequently most dentists do not look in the TM joint area but if you look closely you can see that she has very narrow if any superior joint space on both sides of the film. That should immediately lead you to believe that this patient's mandible is malaligned and or a disc or both discs are out of place. These are two views of the right TM joint in the wide open position. You notice the lack of superior joint space right there. Notice the hollowing out of the posterior surface of the right condyle. Whenever you see something like that, suspect a space occupying lesion applying pressure to the back of the condyle. This is a coronal view of the left and right condyles. You can see that the left condyle is eroded on the lateral surface here. This is a CAT scan image, not an MRI image due to the strong magnetic field in the MRI running the risk of dislodging the metal parts of the deep brain stimulator. This is the right TM joint closed CAT scan showing a good image of the osteophyte on the anterior surface of the condyle. This is another coronal CAT scan of the left and right temporomandibular joints and you can see what appears to be medial osteophytes also on both condyles. This is a patient who was diagnosed approximately 13 years ago. Uh, give us a little bit about your history uh, of this disease. Well, at first, the first signs of it, I started to have a lot of trouble walking. I had a real stiff neck and um, <clears throat> Well, that was, those were primarily the main symptoms. I had a very stiff neck for a while, and then I had started having trouble walking. I couldn't uh, swing my arms. When I was at work, I'd walk down the hall, and I'd bump into the walls. I'd kind of have to use the wall to help me um, balance myself. I would start going forward and wouldn't be able to stop, and I, the same thing would happen. I'd just start going backwards, and I couldn't stop either. Okay. I didn't have much of a tremor, but um, I do now as the medication's effectiveness is getting less. Okay. The medications worked at first? Yes, immediately. I took one pill and it was like I didn't have Parkinson's anymore. And now it's 13 years later? Yes. And the medications aren't working? No, I take it every two hours and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So they're losing their effectiveness? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then five months ago, you had a deep brain stimulator put in. Yes. Yeah. Tell us a little about that. Um, well, it, it was a lot more um, involved in it than I had really expected, but I did get through it. You have to have the uh, wires put in in one surgery, and then uh, about two weeks later, or I guess a week later, I had a um, battery pack put in my abdomen. And then you start going to the programmer for, um, you know, for them to set the, uh, I don't know what you call it, but the settings. They go like 1.8. Right now, mine are both set at 2.2. But um, every time they've tried to set, put my settings up higher, I'll go home. And after a while, I need to put it back to what it was before because it's just, I get stiffened so badly. And... Uh, that's about how it's been so far. Okay, so basically they haven't found the right settings for no, you yet? No, no. Okay, so uh, you've come to us and you, you want to try the mouthpiece to uh, Right, beca see because, what yes, and another thing, I've, you know, I've had TMJ symptoms uh, off and on since about 1986, oh. 87. Okay, uh, sh 
show the uh, viewing audience how wide you can open your mouth. This is 28 millimeters. Uh, get me a ruler. What's it show here today? Okay. 28. 28. Okay, that's her maximum inner incisal opening. Now, bite down. See, she's got an 80% or more deep bite. Why these two clues were missed is beyond me. But this, I feel the this TMJ problem is contributing greatly to her Parkinson's. Uh, every Parkinson's patient I ever met has a TMJ problem. Uh, okay, we're going to uh, deliver her appliance uh, a day or two from now, and then we'll monitor her progress as she goes along, and uh, you'll be able to see a response. Uh, do you still have trouble walking? Um, um, well, yeah, I, when I get stiff because the medication isn't working, um, yeah, I have, you know, when you're stiff, it's really hard to walk, yes. Okay. How about today? Um, no, today I've been okay. Right, primary, my primary symptoms, even on off meds, are mostly from my neck up to my head lately for, you know, they seem to have changed since I had the DBS. Okay. Today is the delivery appointment of this appliance. Notice by the patient's deep bite and how the first thing the appliance is going to do is correct the deepness of the bite. Open. Bite. bite. Now with the appliance in, you can see that the teeth do not overlap and the deep bite is gone. Tap up and down. Okay. This is the initial position we're going to leave the appliance in. We have balanced the appliance already and it's hitting evenly on both sides. She has one point contact on the left and the right side in the upper first molar area against the flat plane on the, on the left and the right sides in the lower appliance. We're going to see this patient in three or four days for her first checkup and we'll show you the improvement between now and then. Okay, this patient returns after wearing her appliance for five days. We've adjusted it and she just told me that for the first time last night she slept for seven hours which is highly unusual. She usually sleeps for four to five hours uh, maximum, but now that her duration of sleep is starting to increase, which is a common uh, thing that we hear from these Parkinson's patients. Uh, we'll see her next in six weeks from now, and we'll bring you her improvement at that time. This is a Parkinson's patient who's had her lower appliance for the past six weeks. She had a deep brain stimulator implanted. Um, how long ago was that put in? In October 2010. And, and they've never been able to get the settings right on it, right? Actually, up until a couple of weeks ago, that's true, but they finally got some good settings for me. Okay. And they're wor working really well in combination with the TMJ and everything else. It's just it's starting to kind of fall together. Okay, but... When we gave you your appliance, they did not have the settings, no. which is why you got the appliance. Yes, at least, in, yes, partially. Okay. Um, and when we put the appliance in, you had hat band headaches uh, one to two times a month. Yes. For several years, and you, uh, your big thing was um, uh, insomnia, trouble sleeping. Yes. And you, at that time, you could only sleep, what, two or three hours a night, or... Four or five, maybe, and then I'd get up, and it was like a split shift of sleeping. Okay, and now you're sleeping how, how much now? Sometimes seven, eight hours. A night? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see, you had uh, f facial muscle tightness. Mm -hmm. uh, your mouth opening has increased from 28 to 33 millimeters because we measured you today. Okay, that's uh, great. Yeah. Every uh, little bit helps. <laughs> every little bit helps. Uh, 
you've had the Parkinson's, uh, you've been on Parkinson's medications for 13 years. Yes. And now between, in the last month, they've just decreased your blood pressure medications. Yes. Right. Tell us about that. Well, I was having really bad blood pressure spikes, um, which is associated with the time of the one dose of medication is wearing off and the second dose hasn't kicked in yet. <clears throat> and in general, I was on blood pressure medication anyway, but now they found, even though I'm having these spikes, my blood pressure is really low, which is common for Parkinson's patients. So now they have decreased the amount of blood pressure medication, but I still need some because my blood pressure does go up a little bit. And this is since you got your appliance, right? Yes. Okay, and you've had these TMJ pliant, uh, 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 symptoms for years and years and years, but no one's paid any attention to them until we started a month ago. Is that correct? Well, yeah. I've complained to my doctors, and nobody has really known what to do. And uh, fortunately, I found you, and you seem to be have a really good treatment program. Okay. Well, it's nice that you said that. That was <laughs> the right thing.